What's going on, YouTube? Today we're going to be lubricating some rods. Before we start doing any um, lubrication, we're going to need a control to compare it against. So right now I'm printing a 20 by 20 millimeter cube that I created off uh, OpenSCAD. Now, um, rule of thumb is I usually lubricate my printers every month and um, major lubrication about every four months. That's including like ripping out the bearings and greasing up the bearings and everything. Um, before we really want to begin with the lubrication process, we would want to clean up all the rods, make sure all the lint and dust is off there. I do that very often because my printer's right next to my washer and dryer in the basement, so it helps. Now here I'm actually using a bicycle, um, it's called Fastline dry lubricant it's for bicycle trains and it goes on wet but as soon as it um, ap applies after a few minutes it actually dries on and it becomes like you don't even see it no more so it, it's not uh, liquid and that helps because again I'm, I'm near a dryer and a washer and all the lint that gets stuck onto the rods and everything I would need some sort of dry lubrication but the downside to using dry lubrication is you have to do it very often. The, the lube runs out really quick. So, like I said, every month or so, you probably want to reapply. Um, if you could take off any rods, lubricate the whole rod itself. If you can't, just do what you can to lubricate it. Here, I'm using a grease. It's called Super Lube Synthetic Grease. And you need the grease to fill in the threaded rods. Um, as you have the nuts and the metal working each other to move the z-axis up and down um, metal and metal will grind if you don't have grease and it will leave metal shavings here I'm just moving the printer have it attached going up and down just to make sure all the lubes going inside the rods and then filling in any grease that I did not apply from before now I'm um, what I'm doing right now is just tightening up all the screws. Uh, that usually comes loose a lot because it is attached to a moving, sort of a moving part, but I tighten that up just to make sure that it's gonna be in a good spot. Uh, even though we're gonna realign the uh, bed. And um, remember to actually tighten all the rod, uh, tighten all the nuts and tighten all the uh, bolts and everything. Now I'm also applying a little bit of lubrication to those little plastic, um, what would you call those? Uh, I would say bearing holders. I don't. I forgot what they're called, but they they help the belt. Uh, if I, I can't think of the name right now, but I lubricate those also. It helps with the noise because sometimes those things make uh, noise. And remember to tighten up all the bolts and nuts. You can't stress that enough because this printer vibrates and over time it just loosens up. Now, I'm just trying to make sure everything's moving, using the parts, making sure it's not too noisy or nothing's grinding, tightening up everything uh, just to make sure. And cleaning up any excess uh, grease that I might have oversprayed. Now here, I'm actually gonna apply um, the Keplon tape into my glass bed. And this is an easier way that I use it. I don't know how other people do it, I just do it this way because I know from tinting windows on cars, you use soapy water. Now, put as much bubbly, soapy water as you can on the glass plate. Once you stick the tape, it doesn't stick right away. It allows you to move it around. And it gives you a, a little bit of play. That way you can settle, uh, set it down wherever you want. Now make sure to use a credit card. Um, that's probably one of the best methods to push out all the bubbles. And don't use a credit card that you always use every day because it actually has a lot of scratch marks. That's why. I, if you see the video, I actually changed the card itself later on. Cut up all the ends, and then I let it sit for a few minutes. Um, make sure everything's uh, squeezed out or everything's um, moved to a correct. I just let it sit for a few minutes before I go back to it and then try to squeeze out more bubbles. And then we're going to be applying this back onto the bed, and I'm going to heat it up to about like 7 degrees Celsius just to remove all the bubbles.
Now, after I'm applying it, put, put up the clips. And here is my print after all the things have been lubricated. It should help with the Z-hopping if you're getting a little bit of that uh, weird lining when you're printing. After lubricating and tightening up all the bolts should help with that. So here are the things I printed. Uh, the two 20 millimeter cube. From what I could see, you could barely see a difference on how it improved in quality. Very slight. I'll actually have a zoom up in a little bit. And uh, you could tell that it did help. But what it mainly did is quiet my printer by a lot. So right now my printer is actually very quiet. Now, if you have any questions, you can leave in the comments below. And I have a buddy of mine who also owns another channel and does a lot of 3D printing uh, using a Robo 3D printer. And his name is Symphonia Sam. And I'll leave his channel's URL down in the description and a link right over here. Uh, he does a lot of cool stuff also. Go check out his channel. And again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching my video. Please take a moment to subscribe. It helps me a lot. And if you haven't watched my previous videos, I'll post the link right here.